Hey golfers, it's Dave from fit to You Golf. Today I want to do a book review and kind of a review of an instructional system based on the work of Joe Dante in 1962 and the book is called The Four Magic Moves to Winning Golf. I think this book was ahead of its time in a lot of ways and I'll explain some about the technique but it was also advanced in terms of how the book starts. It's an overview of sweeping out the trash as he calls it. Um, looking at uh, tips that golfers have been given for years that, that really aren't helpful, like keep your head still. After dispelling myths, the book goes into the basics of the grip and the stance that lead to the four magic moves. And the most noteworthy thing about that, I'd say, is the description of the grip. It's kind of critical to following the rest of the magic moves. Uh, Joe Dante advocates a, a neutral to, to weak left hand and a neutral to strong right hand. So the first magic move, and I think this is the most important to the system, is what's termed an early backward wrist break. At setup, the golfer does a slight forward press, twists their left hand into a bowed position, and presses down on the left thumb with the right palm. So basically, this, this mimics the position at the top uh, right from the start of the swing. The second magic move is simply turning that hand position into a backswing where the head is back and the weight is transferred to the right and there's a full shoulder turn. The third magic move is a left movement of the hips while the head stays back. So this is not unlike Ben Hogan advocating starting the swing with a lower body. The fourth magic move is what Joe Dante called conservation of angular momentum or comb. And basically this is maintaining the wrist angle all the way from the top of the swing through impact. Now, I, I probably there are some people who are superhuman in their wrists who could maintain that wrist angle, but eventually it releases, but it releases late and squares the club face. And essentially what Dante was talking about was what we now call lag. So let me share a little bit about my experience with, with this method. Uh, I went to the range and practiced it and, and didn't hit many balls, but was amazed at how crisply I was hitting my irons. And if you've seen my videos, you know I'm always fighting uh, a steep swing with an open club face. And this seemed to straighten out my ball flight. And I was really compressing the ball very well for me. So I went and took it to the course and played around and I tried to use it on every shot, even my driver and woods, which uh, I didn't have great success with. Uh, had trouble kind of getting the ball fully in the air and uh, and tend, the shots tended to go left. But with my irons, it was it was phenomenal, uh, again, for me, mid-handicapper. And I thought, you know, I had, I had I had found the holy grail. I had solved my problem. And uh, the next day, my wrist, you know, hurt like crazy. Um, and uh, just I realized that that was just not a method that I could maintain. Now maybe somebody who has more you know supple wrists or is less chronologically advanced than me might be able to attempt this. And I also have to say I think I was exaggerating it a bit. I was really getting into a bowed position in the backswing, and Dante describes the backward wrist break as something to get a flat left wrist at the top. So I was probably overdoing it a bit. I do use this method when I'm chipping. I find it really helps my chipping, uh, crisp chip shots um, with predictable rollout, and so I do advocate it for that. But the book is worth checking out. Um, even if you took parts of this in terms of adjusting the grip and, uh, and working to get a, a flat left wrist at the top, I think it'd be helpful to a lot of golfers. And uh, the book was um, reprinted in 1995. You can find that paperback online for 4 or $5. It's, it's worth picking up. So I hope you've enjoyed this review. Uh, keep checking back and stay positive.